Hi, my name is Alan Prost, and I'm going to discuss with you today some of the basic operation parameters of the Respironics V60 non-invasive ventilator. This ventilator is designed to do a wide variety of jobs, but most importantly, non-invasive ventilation. So we can either use a full face mask or a nasal mask on our patient to augment their own spontaneous breathing efforts. On this particular one right now, I've got it set up with a heated, humidified circuit. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is plug it into the wall, give us some gas and uh, some oxygen. Now this only requires oxygen because it uses the room air to augment the flow to our patients. So it just uses the oxygen just to supplement the FiO2. So it only needs an oxygen gas source, and of course we need a little electricity for the device as well. So it needs to be plugged in. The power on switch is right here on the front, but I'm going to show you the circuit first, all right? Now, a little bit different than our other uh, non-invasive ventilators, the, particularly today, I've got this one to give active humidity, so it's going to supplement the humidity being delivered to my patient. And that's a little bit unusual with a non-invasive ventilator, because often we just use the own humidity of the patient, their nose and their oral pharynx, and their, um, their own respiratory system, augment the inspiratory humidity. Right? So like our other non-invasive ventilators, you're going to see that we've got a, uh, uh, a little swivel here attachment with a hole, right? And that's to make sure that there's no rebreathing of the CO2 in the circuit. So that little hole there is very important because it allows the gas flow to be continually vented out and any carbon dioxide in the system or rebreathe gas is going to be vented out through that hole. All right? So, how does this set up? We have a gas force from our ventilator. All right? So we're going to use this larger blue tubing coming right down to our humidifier pot. All right? Let's back you up a little bit more there so you can see that. So, it's a regular humidifier pot, just a Fisher Pig cow. We've got a heated circuit, so it's plugged in at the back and hooked up right in there so it's got power delivery. There's heated wires inside the circuit here, and you can actually see those inside there. All right, So that simply plugs right on the humidifier pot, and it's just a one circuit delivered to the patient's mask with this little pressure manometer on here. And I also have an, um, a temperature probe both here at the humidifier pot and here just before the patient's mask. All right. So that's our simple um, circuit. It's a one-way circuit, unlike the other ventilators where we exhale the, um, we had an exhalation port on the ventilator. This one does not. All right? So come on in a little closer, and I'll show you how to set this one up. All right? Okay. So this particular ventilator is very uh, user-friendly. And a little glare on the screen there. So we've got a little power button here fires up, and like most of our ventilators, it does a little self-test right off the get-go. So I hope you can see that screen there effectively. There, that looks pretty good. All right. So, um, right now I'm just going to put it in a standby mode just so we can get it in there. It automatically goes into standby. I just hit the standby, and if it's not sensing any patient respiratory effort, it just goes into standby. All right. It let me restart that. So this ventilator is actually quite complex and offers a wide variety of different modes and settings. All right? So you've got your regular CPAP, constant positive airway pressure mode, which we could use but um, for to help patients increase their FRC in their lungs. But often, the mode we're going to use and the mode I'm going to focus on today all right, is we're going to use the ST timed, all right? the spontaneous timed mode. And what that does, it's like pressure support with a backup rate, is what it is. All right? So, unlike in pressure support on regular mechanical ventilators, this one uses a little bit different terminology. It uses the IPAP and EPAP. Instant, in, um, inspiratory positive airway pressure and expiratory positive airway pressure. That's where this BiPAP idea comes into play. All right? Don't be fooled. It's really just the mode of pressure support. It's patient triggered, it's pressure limited, and flow cycled, just like pressure support. So, 
The IPAP level is adjusted by touching the button and then just using the little screen here to adjust the level. And I'm going to set it at 12, and I'm going to accept that. All right. My EPAP level, I'm going to make it to 5, and I'm going to accept that. All right. Now, the um, rate, just like on the other Visions ventilator, this is established as a backup rate. So if the patient goes apneic or doesn't breathe, um, this backup rate will kick in. So you can adjust that to whatever you want but it's really just a safety mechanism because we should be using this non-invasive mode on a patient with an intact ventilatory drive. So the TI just um, can be established and this will only be kick in if the patient takes a prolonged inspiration or goes apneic. That's how they will decide on what the parameters are for that positive airway pressure breath or the pressure control breath. Okay, so I'm gonna accept those. If the patient is spontaneously breathing at a rate above set here on the ventilator, this rate will not kick in, and the TI will only kick in if they have a really prolonged inspiratory phase. So I want you to practice with that. All right. So hooking up. Now I'm not going to turn the humidifier on today because we don't need that. All right. I'm just going to set this on here, and just like we had in the other labs, I'm going to make sure my I've got an active exhalation valve here. I'm going to hook it up to my mask like this, all right? And to establish it, I'm just going to make sure I've got my settings, IPAPA 12, PIPA 5, and it's waiting for the patient trigger, or you can just start it by just tapping on this, all right? But watch, as you hook it up to your patient, allow them to spontaneously breathe. So you can see there, and I'm just going to put it in standby, that it was delivering just the parameters that I had established on the ventilator. All right. So if we go into our modes, we go into the ST, it was delivering 12 over 5. All right. If I take a really prolonged inspiration, I can have that at 1.5 seconds. That will limit the amount of inspiratory time, positive airway pressure time I have. All right. You'll notice that there was some other parameters that came up. Um, such as you could monitor the uh, respiratory rate, the tidal volumes delivered, um, the pressures being achieved, uh, the inspiratory flow rate, and the tidal volume. All right? So all those active pay parameters that we want to measure and report out on our patient. Okay? So the key elements about this particular mode is that, one, we're using non-invasive ventilation. I'll show you how to put the head straps and stuff on in the lab. If the patient is in respiratory distress with a high respiratory rate and low tidal volume, we're going to increase their IPAP pressures until that's alleviated, until we augment their own spontaneous breathing to decrease their worker breathing. So that number is going to go up if their worker breathing is high. If their worker breathing is easy, we can sometimes turn it down a little bit until they're just in that comfortable. And by comfortable, I mean usually a respiratory rate of about 12 to 16 or maybe 18 breaths per minute with a reasonable tidal volume. With all non-invasive modes, it's important to have some preliminary um, patient observations before we initiate, initiate the mode and once we get them on there. And then again, it's important to do continuous blood gases to monitor your patient carefully while they're on the mode. All right? So I'm going to breathe it on here again so you can see the tidal volume, respiratory rate, and other parameters. Okay, so it automatically will trigger on as soon as I start breathing through the, through the circuit here. And hung up on that.
Okay, so my name is Alan Prost. That's a quick introduction to the Respironics V60 and how to do those initial setup for a patient who we need to augment their own spontaneous breathing capabilities. Thank you very much. My name is Alan Prost.